Hi guys, I'm Carl from Carl's Ceramics and welcome back to another YouTube video. In today's video, I will be showing you how to make a coffee pour over. I will start off with throwing it and later on I will also show you how I trim it, make some holes in it, add a handle and on the end I will also be decorating it with some inner glazes. So just stick around to the end and I'll show you how I do it. I start off with attaching the clay to the wheel by putting some water on the bed and then I smash the clay onto the bed. Then I start centering it. Centering means that you press the clay towards the middle of the wheel. I first just press it as far to the middle as I can and then I press it more towards the middle by coating it up and pressing it down. You can repeat this multiple times until the clay is fully centered. Then I press the clay downwards and I make it quite wide. I do this because the pour over will be placed on top of a cup or mug, so the bottom of the piece will have to be wider than the wideness of the rim of your cups or mugs. Then I press some clay towards the middle, as you can see I use my middle finger for this, and I slowly press it into the clay to press some clay towards the middle. I keep this part at the bottom quite thick because I will be trimming it, I will be making a little ring on it, by doing that I will have to trim away some clay, so I leave it quite thick so that I can easily trim it. And then I press the rest of the clay inwards as well by holding both of my hands around it, and I press some more clay towards the middle and make the bottom a bit smaller. And then I start opening up the shape. I press my middle finger into the clay and I support my middle finger with my index finger and also with my older hand. And I don't press my fingers inwards too far. I try to press them as far down as the thickness of the clay on the outside. So the little rim that you have on the outside bottom needs to have the same thickness as the clay on the inside. And then I start pulling up the walls. I hold a sponge in my right hand and I hold my left hand on the inside. And I press the clay slowly towards my left hand while making an upwards movement. And I repeat this multiple times. As you can see I make a movement from all the way down to the bottom to the top and I first start off with making it into a straight cylinder so I move my hands as straight upwards as possible and later on when the clay becomes thinner and, and the walls become higher I start slowly pulling the clay outwards. Here I press my finger into the clay a little bit to make a sharper angle between the bottom part and the cup on top. This just because I like the look of that a bit better. And then I press some more clay upwards and slowly pull to form outwards. And I just repeat this multiple times until the clay is as white as I want it to be. I make it quite white so that you can put quite some coffee in it and so that a filter fits nicely into it as well. I like to keep the shape of the pour over quite easy and simple. This way the filter will just easily fit into it but you can of course make the rim a bit more interesting or the shape a bit more interesting just whatever you'd like but I prefer to keep it quite straight. Then when the shape is finished I go over it with a sponge to get rid of any water or slip that's on the inside and the outside just everywhere on the piece. And then I take this wooden knife and I cut away some clay at the bottom and I also clean my bed with this. And then I grab a sponge to smooth out the bottom part of the pour over that I just cut away some clay off. And then the throwing part is finished and it is ready to dry one day before it is leather hard so that I can trim it. As you can see the bottom of my piece was a little bit wonky because of cutting it off the bed. But I just fixed this by going over it with the trimming tool a few times and making sure it is nice, flat and centered. I also made the sides of the bottom a little bit more round by going over it with the trimming tool. And as you can see I make a rim quite far in the middle and I make this quite small because this has to fit into your cup or mug. So I make it quite small so that it just fits onto every cup that you'd like to use this pour over on. And I also like to use a smaller trimming tool to make the sides of this rim a little bit more sharper. And then I go over it with a sponge to smooth it out and then I go over it with this trimming tool that isn't really sharp this just helps me to get rid of the slip that was created by the sponge this also helps with smoothing it out and then I went over it with my fingers another time to smooth it out even more so that it's just nice and smooth and I don't have to sand it and then the trimming part is done you can decide yourself whether you want to make one big hole or multiple small ones I just like the look of multiple small ones but of course the more holes you have or the bigger the holes you make the faster the coffee will run through it so it will also depend on what coffee you'd like to use in your filter. But in this case I make 5 holes with this small hole maker and as you can see I just first place the hole maker on top of the bottom to see where I want to make the hole and then I carefully press it inwards while twisting it a little bit and then I pull it straight out. Then I use this tool to get rid of the little piece of clay that were still stuck in the holes. And here you can see that the holes are quite sharp, so what I like to do is take a sponge and carefully go over the rim to just smooth out the edges of the holes. And as you can see now it's a bit softer and just rounded a little bit. And I do the same on the inside, it was a bit difficult to see but I'm doing the same as on the outside. So I just go over every little hole with the sponge to just smooth out the edges. And then the holes are finished and I start attaching a handle. To attach a handle I like to use this knitted piece of fabric. 
I pull my handles, but you can make your handles in any way you'd like. I will now show you briefly how I attach this handle, but if you struggle with attaching handles, I've actually made a full video about it, so I will link that down below. I first bend the handle into a shape that I like, and then I cut off some excess clay, and then I place it on top of the pour over to see where I want to attach it. And I take my needle tool and make some small scratches, and then I take this tool from Xeen Tools and I scratch at the parts that I just marked. Then I take a brush with some vinegar in it and I apply the vinegar at the same spots. Then I take the same tool as before and I scratch it again. Then I place the handle on top of the parts that I just prepared and I put quite some pressure on it to make sure that it gets stuck. But while putting pressure on it I do hold my other hand on the inside to prevent the pour over from changing from shape. And then I use this tool to press the clay towards the pour over. I just like the look of this, this is not necessary but I like the handle to be one part with the throne piece. And I just keep doing this until it's one fluent shape. And I also do this at the bottom, but since this pour over had a bit of a difficult shape, this was a bit more challenging. But since this tool is quite small, it is nice to use. And then I use this little knife to cut away some excess clay at the sides of the handle. And then I take a sponge and I go over all the parts that I just touched. So at the parts where I attached it, I just go over it with a wet sponge to smooth it out and get rid of any lines. And then I go over it with my finger to smooth out the lines from the sponge. And at the bottom I do the same, I just carefully go over it. It was again a bit challenging, but I just went over it with a sponge to smooth it out and make it one fluent piece. It can happen that you get some cracks in the handle because the handle that I use is quite dry. I easily get rid of these by going over it with a wet sponge. And then the piece is actually finished and ready to dry. I like to first dry it in a piece of plastic. I leave it in here for 3 days. This way the clay will dry very slow and will prevent the handle from cracking. And then I let it dry before basically fire. And then when the piece is dried and biscuit fired, I start glazing it. I use this underglaze from Mako, it's called True Teal. And I've decided to make some splashes, so I put up some plastic bags to save me some cleaning and I started splashing. What I do is just grab quite a lot of underglaze onto a brush and then I smash the brush against my other hand. This way the glaze will fly off and make splashes like this. You could also use a brush with longer hairs that are a bit softer, that way the glaze might fly off a bit easier. And then after the underglaze has dried, I apply two coats of clear glaze all over the piece. I use clear glaze from Emico, and it's important to let the glaze dry in between coats. And I'm using a small brush to glaze the inside of the holes. And I'm also glazing the bottom. And then what I always do is twist my piece on top of this wet piece of fabric to get rid of the glaze that's on the bottom. But the fabric was a bit too soft, which took away a little bit too much glaze from the bottom than I liked. So I took the fabric in my hand like this and then I wiped away only the glaze on the little rim. Because the piece is only standing on this rim, so only this little rim can't be glazed when going into the kiln. And then the piece is finished and ready to be glaze fired. Here are some pictures of the final results. That was it for this video, thank you very much for watching, I hope you liked and learned something new from it. If so, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done yet. And if you're going to make this pool over yourself, you're going to post it on Instagram, please tag me at Ceramics because I would love to see your work. I hope to see you in the next video, bye!